Welcome to another news video under our YouTube channel titled ICQ Comets and Their Cousins. The first such video since mid-September due to a lot of traveling by myself, Dan Green. In October, I traveled to Hobbs, New Mexico to observe the annular eclipse of the sun from near the center line. Here is a photograph that I took showing the moon moving across the sun at five min minute intervals over about three hours. In this channel, we focus on comets and other small bodies of the solar system, including meteor showers and meteorites, along with other near-Earth objects, as well as more distant, interesting minor planets and even eclipses. I'm recording this on 2023, December 10th. This past week, on December 8th, at around 20 hours UT, Halley's Comet passed its furthest distance from the Sun, called Aphelion, and began its long journey back toward perihelion, which will occur on 2021, July 28th. Here is a list of comets discovered or recovered since mid-September. Two of these comets were found by amateur astronomers, 2023 T2 and 2023 V4. 2023 T2 was Gennady Borisov's 12th named comet since his first in 2013. 2023 V4 was found by Jordi Camarasa of Barcelona as part of a program that remotely uses telescopes at the Namibia Observatory of Gregory Dusanovich of Sweden. Comet 2023 V5 is a very small faint comet, but appears to have orbital elements very similar to those of a group of long period comets that includes 1998 A1 Liller, along with 1996 Q1, 2015 F3, and 2019 Y1, with perihelion distance around 0.84 AU and orbital inclination around 73 degrees. Comet 12P Pons Brooks has continued its well-known pattern of frequent outbursts in brightness that are like those seen in Comet 29P schwachmann wachmann in which the nuclear condensation becomes much brighter suddenly before throwing out material that slowly expands into an ever-enlarging coma of dust and gas. Shown here are some photos of 12P from the last three months as posted to the ICQ Comet Observations Facebook forum. Another comet of interest in the last few months is 2P Enki, which has had a favorable apparition. It has an unusually short orbital period of only 3.3 years. We again show some of the best photos of Enki's comet here from the ICQ Facebook forum. We discussed Comet 2023 P1 Nishimura in the last news video. As the comet neared the sun in September, the sun-observing stereo spacecraft captured images that were put together into a neat movie as shown here. We show here also some of the best images of some other interesting comets obtained in the past three months and posted to our forum. channel team member Carl Hergenrother has provided a video on the curious minor planet 3200 Phaeton and the Geminid meteor shower, which peaks now in December. Our solar system is full of enigmatic objects that challenge our understanding of them. In this installment of the Comets in the News, we are going to look at some recent research on an object that appears to straddle the boundary between comet and asteroid. That object is the asteroid 3200 Phaeton the object that produces December's Geminid meteor shower. Thanks to it being the target of a Japanese space mission to be launched in 2025, several recent studies have been published about its shape, its size, its color, the nature of its activity, and what the Geminids themselves can tell us about their age and how the shower formed. In short, what exactly is Phaethon? Asteroid, comet, or something in between? 
Phaethon was discovered in 1983 by the joint NASA-European Infrared Astronomical Satellite, better known as IRAS, which conducted an all-sky survey at infrared wavelengths and serendipitously discovered several comets and asteroids. The most famous discovery being 1983's comet iras Iraqi alcock which is a topic of another video on this channel. As for Phaethon, only days after it was discovered by IRAS, astronomer Fred Whipple noticed how similar its orbit was to the Geminid meteors. The Geminids are one of the best meteor showers to observe. In 2023, the Geminids are predicted to be at their best on the night of December 13th, 14th, which this year is a Wednesday evening and Thursday morning. In recent years, visual observers have measured peak hourly rates between 100 and 200 Geminids per hour. Note, though, that those rates are only valid for observers with very dark skies and when the radiant is overhead, the radiant being the point in the sky the meteors appear to radiate from. So in the case of the Geminids, they appear to radiate from the constellation of Gemini. For most of us, observing under light-polluted skies, the peak will be less and possibly much, much less than the 100 to 200 per hour quoted before. One should also plan to wait till the radiant is sufficiently above the horizon. So while the Geminids can be seen early in the night, it is best to wait till at least 10 or 11 p.m. before trying to observe them. Most meteor showers are produced by comets which release dust and gas as surface and subsurface ices sublimate in the heat of the sun. And most comets have orbits that extend out to the farthest reaches of our solar system due to their origins far from the sun. Even comets that spend most of their time in the inner solar system, such as short period Jupiter family comets, have orbits that extend out to about the orbit of Jupiter. Jupiter being the primary planet whose gravity places these short period comets on their inner solar system orbits. This isn't the case with Phaethon, which has a much more quote unquote asteroidal orbit. Even at aphelion, its furthest point from the sun, it is only 2.4 astronomical units from the sun, which is only about halfway between the sun and the orbit of Jupiter. Back in 2017, Phaethon came especially close to Earth. The now defunct Arecibo radio telescope was able to resolve the shape of Phaethon and found it to be roughly spherical with a diameter of about six kilometers. These images suggested a number of features on its surface, such as a one kilometer crater, and a dark region near one of its poles that is 600 meters across. The shape and size of Phaethon has recently been confirmed by a number of amateur and professional occultation observations, such as this recently published occultation seen over Japan in 2021. Back in 2009, David Jewett found that Phaethon showed evidence of activity when closest to the sun in images taken with the stereo solar watching spacecraft. Observations of a brightening by Phaethon and the production of a coma and tail were confirmed at subsequent perihelion passages. Jewett and other researchers suggested that Phaethon was acting as a quote-unquote rock comet. At perihelion, Phaethon approaches within 0.14 astronomical units of the Sun. That's only 14% of the distance between the Earth and Sun and closer than Mercury gets to the Sun. At such a close distance, the surface of Phaethon can exceed 1,000 Kelvin, causing surface rocks to crack and decompose, releasing dust that was seen as a coma and tail. New analysis of more recent stereo data is presented in papers by Man Tu Hui and Shi Shen Zhang. They found that the color and phase function of the coma and tail are not consistent with that of dust, but rather with that of the emission of sodium, which is being driven from the surface of Phaethon. A key takeaway is that all objects passing this close to the sun may experience some amount of sodium loss, meaning the formation of a gas coma and tail does not require an object to be an ice-rich comet. Another sun-watching spacecraft, the NASA Parker Solar Probe, has approached to within 0.03 astronomical units of the Geminid meteoroid trail and was able to directly image the Geminids themselves. A major finding published by Carl Battams and his team is that the Parker Observed Dust Trail does not share the same orbit as Phaethon. This confirms a problem modelers have had when assuming the Geminids should share the exact same orbit as Phaethon. The two must have diverged in the time since the creation of the Geminids. Another team composed of Wolf Kukir and Jamie Saleh also modeled the Parker imagery for three different Geminid creation scenarios 
a release of particles at perihelion at both low and high velocities, called the basic and violent models, and the release of particles all along Phaethon's orbit as expected for cometary activity. They found the observed geminid stream location relative to the orbit of Phaethon is most consistent with a rapid violent formation near perihelion, say due to a catastrophic breakup, rather than any long-lasting activity which is more typical of a comet. This suggests the formation of geminids, which may have occurred as recently as one to 2,000 years ago, was the result of the partial breakup of Phaethon or its parent, most likely due to rapid rotation. Another of Phaethon's mysteries is its blue color. In fact, it is one of the bluest known asteroids and a shocking contrast to most comet nuclei, which are red. Casey Liss and Jordan Steckloff report that Phaethon's blue color may be due to the same process that is creating its near-sun activity. In addition to the evaporation of rock causing a loss of sodium, the process should also be causing the loss of iron particles. Iron is known as a reddening agent and the primary reason for the redness of most rocky asteroids. If true, then this bluing process should also be active on any small rocky body on a similar orbit that comes that close to the sun. While we can only gleam so much about Phaethon's nature from a distance, this should all change in a few years. In 2025, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, will launch Destiny Plus. Destiny Plus being an acronym for Demonstration and Experiment of Space Technology for Interplanetary Voyage with Phaethon Flyby in Dust Science. If all goes to plan, Destiny Plus will fly by Phaethon in 2029, not only imaging the object up close, but even directly analyzing any nearby dust. We all look forward to what curveballs Phaethon may throw us as Destiny Plus flies by.